Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel and welcome to eight weeks of uh, autumnal woodland inspiration. So all of the projects I'm going to be sharing over the next few weeks are based on a woodland theme. And the first one is this. This is an illustration of fly agaric mushrooms. They're some of my favourites. They're so happy and cheerful and vibrant. And I've painted them with some ferns and some mosses and some crunchy dried up leaves. So let's get started. So I'm going to be showing you everything that you need step by step. I'm going to be uh, taking you through everything, the supplies I'm using, and I have the artwork that I have uh, created for this uh, available. There's a free download on my website and there's a link to that in the description box below. Now I've already transferred the line work onto this watercolour block. And if you need help uh, transferring your line work to your watercolour paper, then I've got a video about that and I'm going to link that up there right now. So I've had a little bit of a break from YouTube and as I've come back, I've been trying to work out uh, what I want to do with this channel. And what I've decided to do, at least uh, to give it a try, is to work in seasons. So I've got a season of woodland autumnal inspiration and this is the first project in that. So there's going to be eight weeks of videos uh, with a different step-by-step -step tutorial every week. And then in between those videos, there are going to be ones that are a little bit deeper and talk um, a little bit more about what you want to do if you want to uh, make your own art projects and um, work from the same inspiration, but create something that's completely different, completely yours and completely unique. So today I'm working on this etcher block. It's um, eight inches square and it's cold pressed watercolour paper and it's 50% cotton and I need to be completely transparent with you that they sent this to me for free to try out so I have not paid for this um, but I will let you know my thoughts on it at the end. And then I've got my watercolours so I have made up a little mini watercolour set which has some of my favourite colours in it. So this isn't a standard set that you can buy. This is one that I've, I've made up out of the different pans that I've bought and the ones that I've kind of liked from different sets over the years. So I'll talk you through which, which paints and which colours I'm using, but you don't need the same colours as I am to do this. Uh, if you've got a pinky red and if you've got a dark brown, then, then that's all you need to know. Um, and I will, I'll tell you the exact colours that I'm using. I've got some little swatches here, but uh, you can substitute these with the colours that you already have. So this colour here is one of my favourites, quinacridone gold. Um, I'm going to be using it fairly dilute and when you use it fairly dilute it's actually quite a pale yellow colour. And then as you add more of it it becomes more of an orangey colour. So I like this because it kind of does double duty. So I can use it as a yellow but I can also use it as a brownie orange. But if you've got any kind of bright yellow in your set just use that instead. This colour is Permanent Rose, it's kind of a pinky red colour, um, so if you've got an alizarin crimson or a, a, a magenta or a, um, something with a little bit of pink in it then that's absolutely fine. So I'm using sepia as, a, as my dark brown but any kind of dark brown colour will work. And then I've ended up using two blues but if you're using a bright yellow you may not need a different blue. It's useful to try and mix some yellows and blues and try and get different greens and see which ones you like. Then this colour I've used, this is Buff Titanium, it's a Daniel Smith colour and it's really kind of creamy and I think it's a really good mushroomy colour. It's almost perfect for um, mushroomy stalks, it kind of looks like that anyway. But if you don't have this, um, you can mix a little bit of brown and a little bit of white together and you'll get that same kind of creamy mixture. Or you can just use a very, very dilute mix of uh, a dark brown and you will get a nice kind of beige and that will work just as well. I've got two brushes here. These are both round brushes. I've got a number six and a number two. Now, I am done about using masking fluid for this project because I know not everybody has it, but I think that um, it makes it a lot easier. Um, I'm going to paint out the white spots of the caps on the caps of the mushrooms with the masking fluid. So you can do it by painting around all of these little dots and just leaving the white spaces. That works perfectly well. It's just a little fiddlier. Um, so the masking fluid I thought worked 
really nicely for this. But if you don't have it, another option is you could just paint the whole caps of the mushrooms in red and then use some white gouache or uh, like a thick white paint on top, maybe even an acrylic, and you will get uh, that nice white bright uh, uh, spots on top of the mushrooms. But I'm going to use masking fluid to, for it to preserve the white of the paper. To apply the masking fluid, I've got a really old, cheap paintbrush. Um, it does kind of get a little bit gummed up with the masking fluid, so don't use any of your good brushes for this. And then other things, um, I've got a little bit of uh, tissue paper for drying my brush on. I've got some clean water here. Um, I've got a tiny little bit of scrap paper just for testing colours out on. Um, and I've got my kneaded eraser, which I'll use at the end for getting rid of any extra kind of pencil marks. The first thing I'm going to do is take this masking fluid. And this is about 20 years old, but it's still going strong. And I'm just going to dab it on the little spots. These spots are all different sizes. Some of them are large and some of them are small. Um, and I'm just going to keep adding them uh, to both mushrooms and then I've got to wait until the masking fluid is completely dry before I start painting. So to start with I'm just adding a little bit of water into my buff titanium and putting some of that on my palette. I'm going to start by painting the mushrooms and I'm going to do the stems and the underneath first. You could do this in any order you want but I'm doing it that way around. And I'm going to take some of this sepia, not very much at the minute, and just create a little puddle of that next to my buff titanium. So let's pick up some of this creamy paint and I'm going to paint the underneath here. Now the, there's a little skirt so it's kind of, it sticks out and then it goes in and becomes narrow again. And I'm just going to paint all of that all the way down. Right down to the bottom. And then I'm going to take some of the sepia on my brush, I've not cleaned it, I'm just going to and pick up a little bit of that colour and I'm just going to dab it right down that left hand side and let it bleed in. And you can move it around a little bit if you want to but basically that's it, you just kind of leave it there. So now I've done this one I'm going to do the small one, I'm doing that exactly the same way. Take some of that creamy colour, fill in the whole of the stem making sure I've got that skirt that sticks out and is a little bit wider. And then without, without washing my brush, I'm just picking up a tiny little bit of that sepia and just dabbing it in along the left hand side of the stem. And I can put a little bit more at the top if I want. And a little bit more kind of underneath this where the skirt sticks out. But this is going to all move and blend so you don't need to worry too much about it about where it's going. We'll do we'll add a little bit more detail later on. Now I'm going to go back over to this one over here and I'm just going to paint in underneath the cap of the mushroom again with that creamy colour. There we go. And I think that could do with a little bit of, of darkness underneath there as well. So let's just dot in some of that sepia there. I think there's a little bit too much at this side. So what I'm going to do is clean my brush, wipe it on here, 
and just use the dry brush to lift out any areas that I think are a little bit too dark. So that's the first step and then I'm going to do the cap of the mushroom but in order to do that I want this bit that I've just painted to be completely dry so I'm going to leave it for a few seconds. So now I'm going to paint the caps of my mushrooms. This one might still be slightly damp, it's maybe a little bit wet. So I'm going to leave that one, I'm going to start with a small one. Um, so I'm going to take my yellow, so you can use any yellow for this. I'm using this quinacridone gold because I like all of the different tones in it. And I'm going to make kind of quite a wet mix of that. So a little bit of colour, but a fair bit of water. And I'm also going to put some water on my pinky red colour. So the one I'm using is Permanent Rose. I'm just going to add a little bit of water into that. Let it sit there. And then I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to paint it all over the cap of this mushroom. You might think, why are you painting yellow when it's actually red? But if you look at photos of it, it's actually um, kind of got yellow undertones all over it. And then it's kind of darker at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do that by adding in that pinky red at the top and the bottom of the cap. But to start with, I'm going to give it a layer all over of this nice yellow colour. And now while it's still wet, I'm going to take a little bit of that pinky red on my brush. And you can take it straight from the pan if you want. And I'm going to run it along the bottom here. There we go. You can dot it in and on the top. Bring it down a little bit and dot some more of that colour in at the top. And I'm just allowing the colours to blend together and because that yellow is all wet I should get some really nice blends. Add a little bit more of that in along here. And where the two colours mix, you get more of an orangey colour. And where there's more of the pink, you get more of the pinky colour. Now I'm doing this in two stages. That's because these are nice bright colours now, but watercolour always dries a little bit lighter. So by the time this is dry, it'll look a little bit pale and uninteresting. So if I paint it in two stages, uh, with this being the first layer, then I'll get some really nice bright vibrant colours. So I've done that with the bottom one. Now I'm going to do the same with this one at the top. So because I've put that masking fluid on it, I can just paint right over all of these spots. But if you didn't use the masking fluid, you could at this stage just paint around them like that. But uh, as you can see, it's much easier just to paint across all of them. Just going to keep going, adding that yellow to make it nice and smooth on the edges. Be a little bit more pigment in there. And then again, I can take this pinky colour and run it along the bottom, all the way around the bottom edge. Take a bit more colour, I think. And I can kind of drop it in in places. Or I can take my brush and run it all the way along. Or a mixture of the two. And I'm going to do the same at the top. 
a nice concentrated area of that pinky red pigment at the top and then just start pulling it down into the yellow. And I think that is enough for a first pass of this. So now what I need to do is just let that dry and then I can come in and add second layer to both the top and the, the stem of the mushroom. So now this is all dry, I'm going to go in and add some details and a second coat on the top of the mushroom caps. So I've got my sepia again. Again, there's still quite a bit of water in it and I've got my small paintbrush this time. And on the dry paper, I'm going to add a little layer of shadow. So I'm going to go down the left hand side of each mushroom stalk and then a little bit underneath the skirt. So underneath and down the side. And I can also put in a few little stripes and marks and dots kind of give the effect of like some roughly bits or something like that. If I feel any of my lines are a bit harsh, I can clean my brush, take the excess water off and just spread it out a little bit. So I've got a damp brush, but there's not a lot of water on it. So I'm not adding extra water into it. I'm just spreading out what's there. I think we could do with a little bit darker right down that left hand side. So I can just take a little bit more pigment and just add that in down there. There, that's better. And again, I can use a clean damp paintbrush to blend that out if I feel like it's a bit much. bit more down here I think. There, that's pretty good. Now let's do the same on this one. So a little stripe down the left hand side, a little bit underneath, a little bit underneath that skirt and another stripe down the left. can wash my brush out and use just the water to spread that out if I feel like I want some softer lines. And add in a little bit more pigment and a couple of little subtle detailed lines like that. Again, I can take a little bit more colour and add that in down that left hand side. And underneath. Maybe a couple of little slightly darker lines in a few places. There we go. Now along the bottoms of the skirt, there's actually like a little yellowy line. So I'm just going to use some of this quinacridone gold that's left on my palette and just put a line of that maybe mix in a little bit of sepia line of that along the bottom of the skirt there. Just a little yellow line along there. And then when this bit at the top is dry, I can add in the second layer of the colour on my cap. 
actually before I do that I'm going to take some more of the sepia on the very fine brush and I can test it on my little bit of paper just to get the colour how I want it. I don't want it too light or too dark for this because I want to be able to see I'm going to paint the gills in under the cap. So all of the gills would be connected to the central stem so they're all kind of coming out from the centre. So the ones closest will be heading towards the, the back of the mushroom and then these ones out here heading towards the sides. So all kind of coming from one point. And I'm just using the very tip of my brush to paint these lines in. And actually I think I'm going to turn my paper. I'm going to turn my paper to get this side in. There we go. Maybe do a little bit darker just at the centre there. There we go. So I've got some gills now. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing again that I did the first time around. So I've got my yellow, I've got my pinky red, the rose, and then I actually am going to use a little bit of sepia on this as well. So let's just bring a little bit more of that over here. So let's start with a small one because this is all dry. So again I'm going to paint the whole thing with yellow. Make sure it's all nice and wet. And then I take my pinky red and drop it in at the bottom and the top. This time I'm really intensifying the colour. And I can take some really strong solid colour straight from the pan where that water has been sitting in it and drop it in at the top and the bottom and let it bleed. And then I want to take some sepia and just really darken the top, just right at the top there. And then along the bottom here, I want some sepia as well, just to make this bottom bit really nice and dark and deep red. And then let's check those. Yep, the gills are dry. So now I can do this, this uh, big one in exactly the same way. So nice layer of yellow over the whole thing. Some of the pink along the bottom and at the top. And then I'm taking my sepia and running that along the bottom. So get a bit more colour on there. Make it nice and dark down here. And the same at the top.
So my mushrooms, I think are pretty much done. At the end, I'm gonna take the uh, the masking fluid off and, uh, and just touch up those little white spots a little bit. But other than that, I think they're pretty much there. I could go back in later and add in a few more shadows if I think it needs it. So we'll see later on. But for now, I'm gonna move on to doing these leaves. So the, uh, the mushrooms I found in the forests um, when I took photos of them, the, the bases of them are almost always obscured by di dried and dead um, wrinkled up leaves. So I've put in a couple of oak leaves and some, I think these are beech or something like that. Um, so a couple of different types of leaves and a couple of different types of colours. So I'm going to start with the gold and I'm just going to create a little puddle of that on my palette. And it's a bit bright as it is, so I'm going to mix in a little bit of the sepia just to dull it down a little bit. You can mix in a little bit of this titanium if you want to. Maybe a little greeny at the minute. That's probably going to be okay for some of the leaves, but some of them I want to be a little bit warmer, so I can just mix a little bit of this pinky red into there and get myself a nice kind of warmer yellowy orangey colour. So I'm going to paint in these two leaves here in a slightly warmer and more orangey colour and then the ones over here in the more kind of yellowy one. And I'm just going to do one layer all over the same kind of colour. So I'm going to start from the base of the leaf um, and just paint the whole thing. And I'm basically using the tip of my brush to make sure the edges are nice and smooth. And then fill in the rest in. But you've got to be careful that you um, that you kind of blend all the colours together while they're still wet. So now I've got my first layer down on one oak leaf. I'm going to do exactly the same with the second one. And then I'm going to move on to the beech leaves. The other ones here um, are going to be slightly more of that kind of yellowy browny green. Um, I'm, this one overlap, these two leaves overlap. So I'm going to leave this one to last so that this one is dry by the time I come to paint this one. So if I paint this one up here first, And I could probably just paint this in a couple of swipes and then use the tip of my brush to fill into the edges. Neaten it off. This one here. It's the end, the end of this one folds down. You get a nice little kind of point on there. And then this last one, let me just check this bit here is dry. And yes, it is. So I can come in and paint this bit. So now I've got that lighter leaf kind of overlapping this slightly darker one. So now that this leaf is dry, I can go in and add some more details. So on my palette here, I've got the same colours, but I've added a little bit more sepia just to make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to start, I'm using my small brush this time, and I'm going to start painting the stem of the leaf there. Some nice dark sepia right at the end. And then I'm going to take that through the leaf, following the lines of the veins of the leaf. And then I can use just the tip of my brush and add in 
some more of those veiny detail lines, as many as you like. So I'm just going to show you how to do one of these and then the other ones are done in exactly the same way. Now these are kind of crispy dried up leaves and they're kind of curled over as well. So what I want to get is that effect of parts of the leaf being slightly darker than others and, and a bit lighter and maybe some kind of crusty bits and sometimes they get like little knobbly bits on the edges. So I'm going to take some of that dark colour again and I'm going to run it around a few of the edge bits. of these leaves and then I'm going to blend some of that colour out. So it looks like parts of the leaf are darker than some of the others and some of them might be a bit redder. So maybe this bit at the end is maybe a bit darker and a bit redder and again you can add the paint and then with a clean damp brush blend it out so you don't get any harsh lines. So I'm just going to keep on adding little bits to the leaves like this and it's kind of random the places that I'm putting them in because leaves would, that are kind of crusty and, and dried up they're not going to be regular so it doesn't really matter too much which bits are darker and which are not. Now I'm going to do the same with these ones, slightly, slightly yellowier brown, but again I'm going to do the stems with my nice fine brush. And I think I can thicken them a little bit more than that. And as I get to the top, I can wiggle my brush just a little bit. And then I want the veins in these to be quite broken and wiggly. one here. That central vein goes up the middle of the leaf there and then it kind of folds over. So the rest of it would be down here, like that. And I'm kind of holding my brush um, what am I doing? I'm just being a little less careful about my lines on these ones. And then again, I want to add some nice areas of shadow to some of these leaves. So I start at the edge and blend it towards the middle. And then maybe this is a bit crispy at the bottom here. A kind of crispy edge there. Maybe even a little darker. Clean my brush. Dampen it off on the dampen it off on the towel. Take the excess water off on a towel and just blend. 
blend that out. Now this one folds over so I can use some quite dark sepia on this bit underneath where it's folded over there so that bit would all be in shadow. And then the same here, there's a little bit kind of folded over there. And I might use a little bit of sepia to define the edges of this one here. Maybe blend that one in a little bit. I'm just going with instinct here with which colours to put where, what I think looks best. And you can be quite random with it, just paint random patches of of light colour on top of your leaves. Okay, I have faffed along with those quite a bit now. So the next thing to do with the ferns, I want some green for my ferns, so I'm going to start with that gold, the quinacridone gold, and I'm going to mix some blue into it. So French Ultramarine is my go-to blue. Let's have a little bit more of it. And that's going to make me quite a nice olivey green. But I think I want something a little bit brighter as well. I'll add some Windsor Blue into that and it's gone really quite bright and I can just dip my brush into different puddles of green and even into this um, kind of browny colour over here and get a variety of different greens. So start at the top and just paint a little um, a little oval shape and then down the stem alternating different sides and I'm painting little messy ovals. And I'm dipping into my different greens as I go and then allowing them to kind of mix a little bit. These little leaf shapes, they just get longer and bigger as they get further down the stem. I'm going to keep going all the way down. The only tricky bit is when it kind of goes behind all the mushrooms and the leaves. You've just got to like think a little bit about which leaf it is and just imagine where it goes behind all of the other things. So I'm going to continue doing both leaves um, and then I'm going to come back to you when I'm ready to do the next bit. Now these ones here are a little bit dark. What I can do is just dab it with my paper towel and I can take off some of the excess paint that was up there. And then spread it out a little bit. If it's nice and wet, it'll, it'll blend itself again quite nicely anyway. I just didn't want that little bit being a bit more darker than the rest of the ferns. If this one here is dry, which it is, I can go in with a stem. So I'm mixing slightly darker green. Again, I've got my little brush and I'm just going to do a swooping line that joins the bases of all of those leaves. So it comes through here. And then I want to make sure it carries on through that mushroom and out the other side. So there's no, there's no wobble in it. 
and I can bring it down from the top like that. I've just joined all those leaves together. And then each leaf can have its own central vein if you want it to. Oops, I've just painted that one right through the leaf. Let's get rid of that. And the same on this one here. Nice swooping line that joins the bases of all of these leaves together. And then can draw with the very tip of my brush just little curving lines down the centre of each of these leaf nodules, is that what they are? Now this one's still slightly damp at the top so there's these extra lines kind of blending in a little bit but that's all right I don't mind that too much. Now we're nearly there so the last thing to do is I've just got all these little gaps and uh, when I looked at um, photos of uh, these little mushrooms, what I found was they're quite often growing with moss. So I thought I'd try to do some moss. So I'm gonna use this green that I've already made up, but I wanna make it darker. So I'm just gonna mix some more um, sepia into it. That's gonna give me a nice dark mossy green, maybe even a bit more sepia like this. And um, I've put in a few little branches where I think this mossy stuff can go, but um, you can put them wherever you think there's a little gap. So I'm just going to draw uh, little stems and then add little leaves to them just by pressing the brush down and I can dip into different areas of that green that I've set up so I get some lighter areas and some darker areas. So just draw these little stems, flick flick and then press your brush down on either side and add in slightly different greens and keep going until you've filled in the space. My little mossy leaves are getting a bit more unpredictable but that's okay. Something like that. There we go. When everything is dry, and you're absolutely sure it's all dry, you can start rubbing away your masking fluid. And just with a clean hand, you can get rid of some of the some of this, and it just rubs off. Um, if you find that your finger isn't doing the job. You can go in with um, an eraser. I find that like a traditional one, not one of these, not one of these molded kneaded ones. They, I don't find that works very well, but the, the traditional hard school erasers work really well for getting rid of this. So I am just going through and getting rid of all of that. So my little 
spots on my mushroom caps are nice and white now and there we go it's all gone so that's pretty good there's only one last thing that I would do which is this all of these little white spots on the mushroom actually stick out they're like 3d they're not just like coloring they're like little crusty bits um, so I'm going to take some of the sepia mixed with a fair bit of water because I don't want it to be very dark like that and I'm just going to put a few dabs on the bottom of each of these white spots making sure I don't go any further than halfway and kind of outlining any that stick out at the top. So that little bit of sepia just on the bottom and underneath the little white spots. It's very subtle but it just makes them look like they're actually sticking out from the mushroom cap. So there we go, there's my little mushroom illustration featuring fly agaric mushrooms with some crusty leaves and some ferns and moss and I hope that you uh, enjoy this if you give it a go. I said I'd let you know what I thought about this block. So this is from Etcher and it's the one that I've done these mushroomy paintings on and I've done a few others as well and uh, it's a block, it's, um, it's a nice size, I like squares. I like a square block, I like square formats. Um, this one's eight by eight inches, um, which is a nice a nice size for, for kind of doing small contained uh, pieces. And I really like the paper. It feels really nice. It's 50% um, cotton and it's really nice to paint on. It The paint flows nicely. It, it doesn't stay wet as long as like 100% cotton paper would, but I wouldn't expect that. But what I really like, you can see it on here, is the way that granulating colours sit in the uh, grain of the paper. It's very attractive, so I really like that. Now, strangely for a block, normally they're gummed on four sides, and this is only gummed on two sides, the top and the bottom. That does make it easier to take your paper off when you've finished, like that. Most of the paper is absolutely fine. But once where you've used a lot of uh, liquid, so like this one, I covered most of the surface, so most of it got wet. It's kind of curled up at the sides. So I don't know if you can see that on the video. And no amount of kind of straightening it has, has been able to get it to sit flat. Now that's not really going to be a problem if you're going to frame something because it will be behind glass or behind a mount board. Uh, it's not really going to be a problem if you're uh, if you wanted to scan your work and kind of uh, digitize it. Uh, but it's just something to be aware of. Uh, but other than that, um, I really like the paper and uh, I'll be continuing to use this. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you'd like to see more from me, then do subscribe to the channel. So over this autumn time, I'm going to be sharing eight different step-by-step -step projects. They're all going to be slightly different. So whatever your style, I hope that you'll find something that you enjoy. And there'll also be some technical videos where I'm sharing things about art supplies and sketching and, and those kind of things. So I really hope that you'll enjoy them. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye.